I love our new blog topic, menstruation. Mm -hmm. And Laura, you had a strong reaction reading all the new blog posts from our leaders. Well, I didn't think this was going to be such a difficult topic for me. And I rode along, but I was disconnected from my emotions. And I just thought, well, it's been a long time since I've menstruated, uh, you know, like almost 30 years I've been in menopause that maybe I'm just like, yeah, maybe there's just something not here or maybe I'm not connecting to some emotion. And I resisted posting these blogs. But then when I finally sat down to do it, you know, of course, I have to like read every post carefully as I'm like putting it up. By the time I got to the fifth or sixth post, I had tears streaming down my face. And I realized how deeply I missed having my period. Um, and it was a wound that I just, I never knew was there. And so I think that's the importance why being in circles of women, hearing other women's stories is so healing, um, being a witness to these stories. So, uh, as, as our readers look over them, I hope that they find something in there that, that they can relate to as I did. I related to something in every single story. And it brought me to a new level of healing. So I am writing. <laughs> I'm going to be adding my blog post at the end of the list of all of our featured bloggers. Let's start with a quote from Tosh, um, one of our leaders in training. She said, I darted into the bathroom to change my tampon and realized it wasn't there. I have had this happen too. You know, you're so busy. Mm -hmm. And to be busy in corporate America, you kind of have to separate from your body when you're a woman. Mm -hmm. And I think we've all been there. And then it's like, oh, my God. And she ended up going to the gynecologist and she's like, nothing's there. And, you know, that's why touch mm -hmm. and orgasm is so important to check in with your body because it's so easy to scrape it off the plate. Exactly. Exactly. So I think her story is relatable. I certainly related to it. Um, yeah. So that's that's a good one. Jennifer is such an amazing storyteller. And I've read her story before, um, but it's a great one for how, you know, being with a sex positive partner, a period positive partner can shift your own attitudes. Uh, so her quote was, the taste of me on his lips was sweet and metallic, like when you cut your finger and suck on it to stop the bleeding. So erotic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, if you can get through this mm -hmm. without wanting to like masturbate or taste someone's menstrual blood, you know, I challenge you to it. I've always had partners that never had issues with mm -hmm. me bleeding during mm -hmm. any kind of sex play. Mm -hmm. um, and it is really hot. You know, period blood is different. Mm hmm then regular blood, it's it's stickier and thicker and more metallic. And there's something about it, the, the power of, you know, what it is. And I was just reading how your uterus, when you do get your period, when, you know, the lining sloughs off, it's a wound. Mm -hmm. And the wound heals itself every month. Uh -huh. And it's like stem cells on acid. Um, but the blood from the uterus to feed new life, even when it's not there, when it comes out and is released by the body, I just think it's super erotic. Yes, yes. Women's bodies are amazing. And so let's talk about Emily's piece because she actually wrote two pieces. Like, you know, she couldn't, and, and I love that she did. So uh, she wrote a great piece about using your menstrual blood for healing. So the quote from her first one is, I brought the menstrual cup from my lips to my lips, sniffing its rich richness. Then I drank it down in one gulp. Yes. And this is something that was always done. Drinking your menstrual blood, not at the beginning mm -hmm. or the end of your cycle, but the middle. So it's not mm -hmm. something that we are saying you have to do, but having that experience, I did the opposite. When I took out my cup, I just felt like for whatever reason, mm -hmm. I was compelled to put my fingers in. And like war paint, right? <laughs> I want right. Like that on my face. Yes. And doesn't it make sense mm -hmm. that you know a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, mm -hmm. that that blood would have different uses? It makes so much sense, and to honor and celebrate that, right? Um, I love anything that comes 
uh, from Emily's pen. Oh my gosh, <laughs> me too. And she just writes so well. And her post is rich with information. So, you know, if you're looking for a resource to find out how to make tinctures, you know, what to do with your menstrual blood, you know, she really gets into it. And uh, yeah, so I think her piece is so important. And Carlin, your piece is so important. So thank you for mentioning it because I'm going to add it to the list. <laughs> 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 well, you know what I was? I was turning 45 and I remember thinking like Betty used to always say, Carlin, I know it sounds crazy, but you're going to miss your period. Right. And I went, oh no, the bloating and the cramping. And I was always bleeding through everything. And then I thought, wow, I'm 45. Yeah. I want to embrace this. I want to celebrate this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. No, the, the power of men, your power as a menstruating woman really comes through in that post. So yeah, I, I will definitely add it because it just goes right along with this. Um, Emily's second piece is just starts out like I laughed out loud. Um, <laughs> so she describes a scene where she's at work and it's happened to like all of us you know, her, like, like where you just make a mess, right? Um, you don't mean to, but your menstrual blood makes a mess in a public space. Um, so her quote for the second one is the full overflowing cup did an acrobatics routine, jumping out of my hand, twirling towards the floor and, and in a spectacular firework display, bedazzled the surroundings with a million blood sequins. <laughs> Oh my God, I've done it. You take out the cup and you, you feel so strong about it, like you have it in your hand. And then it like, I don't know, something happens and it's up in the air. Uh, you have to, it's folded to be inside. And then when it comes out, it kind of springs open mm -hmm. and it looks like a murder scene. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, her whole description of like coping with menstruating while at work. Uh, and I it's a fun it. read. It, it's a great read and how she talks about we're living in a world created by non-menstruating bodies, right? And so we're supposed to hide what's going on for us. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Both of her pieces. Amazing. I always love, like you said, whatever Emily writes, I'm in. <laughs> so Next, we have Amy, and Amy Weisfeld has been one of our longest certified body sex facilitators practicing in the Northwest United States. She's near Portland, Oregon, but she actually holds her workshops in Washington State. Um, yeah, so her writing is always spectacular. Uh, her quote, I am entering postmenopause, and while my moon no longer flows, my spirit does. And it's fierce and flowing. You know, there is something about a postmenopausal woman. It, you now enjoy a newfound freedom mm -hmm. that, you know, fertility. Yes. And it hangs over our lives, especially now that we're living in an era where healthcare is limited for women. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden now you're free. And Betty and I saw this in the workshops, women in their fifties and sixties. Oh, they hit their stride. That whole idea that our vaginas dry up and we don't want to have sex is not what we experienced. Yeah. And this is what Amy is sharing uh, a sense of freedom and new life and new beginnings. And mm -hmm. it's so true. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, beautiful writing. And I think a lot of women in this category, I know I related as a postmenopausal woman. And I think it gives a different perspective for women who are menstruating, what you have to look forward to. Rachel. Um, Rachel is one of our coaches in training and her pieces are, I didn't know she was such a good writer. <laughs> I mean, it was great right out of the box. Um, you know, she wrote about her relationship with menstruation. It just kind of gives a good overview. Um, her quote, my mother started menopause in her early 40s, so I'm trying to enjoy and appreciate my periods before they are gone forever. And that's it. It should be something that we celebrate, that we connect with, that we understand, not something that we hide and know that there will be an end. Right, right. Right, so to savor those moments mm -hmm. and not always see it as, oh, I got my period, but like, I I, I'm in my power. And it's true when we're menstruating and mm -hmm. our estrogen levels are very high, our ability to think of a concept and then the perfect word for that mm -hmm. concept is 
concept is at its height. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you have your period, yeah, you, the truth is just right there. Next, we have Monica's. Um, Monica's quote. I took my seat and spread my legs announcing, this is my blood shed for you. Now you will see what a vulva looks like when menstruating. I used to see this all the time in the workshop. She was in a workshop um, here in New York City and women would always free bleed in the workshops. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's something that we don't see because we can't see our own vulva. It's very powerful and very compelling, not in a sexual way, Mm -hmm. but you can't take your eyes off it. Yeah. Yeah. And I I loved Monica's piece because she starts out talking about her very first period, you know, getting it when she was 10 years old in school, mm-hmm. you know, and not wanting to be a woman. Um, and and that it's very, very relatable. And then she ends with talking about sharing her bleeding in a body sex circle. And yeah, the the freedom from that was just amazing. Um, and speaking of sharing your your menstruation in a body sex circle, Lakota. Oh my gosh, I think this is my favorite piece that Lakota has has written. She led a body sex workshop recently in Michigan, and she was on her period. You know, she tried she tried to like make it when it was not on her period, but you know, her body had other plans. So she decided to free bleed in the circle as the facilitator. And she writes, I laid back, vulva toward the circle, and warned everyone again that they'd be seeing a lot of blood as I was now free bleeding. Yes. And it's not really that much blood, but Mm -hmm. it does get all over your wand and your barbell. And when I looked at her picture, it brought back all these memories because, you know, I was always having my period in a circle because we would choose dates a year in advance. Um, Mm -hmm. And it was all based on holidays and what time would be good for people to travel. There's something so liberating when it's not a shameful moment. And Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like, yes, I'm bleeding. And orgasms when you're menstruating, it clears out the uterus. It helps get everything. It's so healthful. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And so I think Lakota really worked through a lot of shame. I mean, her whole piece is about this experience of free bleeding and, and, you know, how it shifted her mindset um, and how she's appreciating her menstruation in a whole different way. We hope you enjoy these pieces and we hope you connect to your menstruation wherever you are if you're on the other side of it, or if you're right in the middle, or you're right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful part of our womanhood.